absolutely fabulous, fabulous, fabulous to be here talking about an important topic to Singapore, to the world, to every region, to every group of people, creative solutions to sustainable cities. Uh, Ambassador Chan, uh, ambas uh, excuse me, Minister, Ambassador from the Netherlands, Ambassador from Costa Rica, thank you. Uh, as well as ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to build and complement hopefully Peter's talk. And what I'm going to do is maybe go into a maiden problem that we are investigating with the Netherlands currently and our partners there. And that is looking at maybe sustainability and the complement to it that's tremendously important. And that's life. Our life, our life through generations. And being, how do we bring design to bear in the life of people in urban cities as we're ch changing in the urban environment? And how do we, in fact, look at our, our gain hands with our beloved elders uh, and really spearhead advancements into an active life for everybody? That's my topic. I'm going to go on a journey first to describe that problem. I'll then continue on and look at maybe what we'll call the innovation economy uh, and, and what uh, that innovation ecosystem is all about. I'll explore how maybe SUTD is going after that with our partners. And I'll end with some hopefully tantalizing projects that we have going on in technology in actually Singapore and some of our installations and in communities inside and outside Singapore. In the start to this, uh, let me start with the problem we're working on with our partners in the Netherlands. This is gray but mobile. Uh, two wonderful universities are, we're engaged with and we're, it's a maiden journey for us because we've just signed the MOU. But the problem is about how do we take a resource, a, maybe a, a marginalized group, which is our elderly, and really engage them to add mobility to their lives so they can express their creativity, so they can bring their years of wisdom, so they can bring their vitality to the problem at hand, which is sustainable cities. If we engage that group, our likelihood of success goes up amazingly. That's the problem at hand, as shown by these figures. If why work on this with the Netherlands? You saw some data previously, and I apologize, it's small here. But if you look at the life expectancy in the Netherlands, and you look at the life expectancy in Singapore, it's almost a mirror image. All right, we share, as the minister pointed out, educational aspects. Uh, we, we share a long history, and we share this common problem, gray but mobile. Now, how are we going to take it? How are we going to address this problem? Well, the next part of my journey, I want to tantalize you a little bit uh, and show you a couple of designs. There will be a video that will appear to your right and left. Uh, I apologize for making you turn your head, but let me set up the problem before the video starts. Welcome to. Uh, and this is only to tantalize you. But from our center, from SUTD, we had the problem of taking a unmanned aerial vehicle to then be able to use it in a low, sustainable way and put it on any wall, not a tree, not a branch, not a phone line, and have it perched there so it's a very low energy sustainable platform to then be able to turn itself over as it looks for things. Maybe it's for search and rescue. Maybe it's for other applications. And then when it sees something to autonomously take off and do its thing. If we watch this real quick here, maybe it will take off and actually take off from a wall very much like that. All right. In that video, what I'm trying to capture imagination is innovation is a key stepping stone in our journey to sustainable cities. Maybe it's innovations like this. When we were given that problem, nine months, uh, we, we actually solved it over a nine month period. When we were given it, we were scared. We did not know if we could solve it. And quite frankly, we bet that we could not solve it. Let me give you another problem. And this is a very recent advancement here. We had the uh, eye lights at the Marina Bay Sands. Uh, at eye lights, we uh, had our team, we had uh, professors from architecture, from engineering product development, uh, actually having installations there. And this drone here also flew over the space to give a very interesting perspective of what the lights uh, expressed, how it was part of Singapore, and how it was part of innovation uh, and seeing it from a different perspective. But could you imagine maybe going one step further than that and looking at the biology that's around us? and being bio-inspired by a maple seed. If any of you are familiar with a maple uh, tree, a seed falls off and it's nature's helicopter. Could you imagine using that as motivation with some mono wing, like this, uh, building it with some engineering and some creativity so it, it flies like a maple seed. And then as it's rotating as a helicopter, being able to create a panoramic view of a scene that you would not be able to create with the other drone I saw you without great manipulation. Maybe that's a sign of innovation. Maybe that's a stepping stone of what we're creating at SUTD that might lead us to sustainable cities. 
Well, neither one of those will solve the problem. So what's the next step uh, in our journey? All right, to me, it's an innovation economy. All right, and you might have seen this type of figure. We all probably know it. The innovation economy really is made up of industry. It's made up of government entities. It's made up of entrepreneurs. It's made up of technology. But universities are a key portion of that. Universities in the past have been a place that put out students, our, our number one product, to actually geometrically grow with ideas that come from the university. But perhaps the university can do more in the ecosystem. A plot might show us a little bit about this. As we think about plotting technology and meaning, maybe something you're not expecting, all right, as we think of innovation, but technology and meaning, if we're going to look at something that's going to be disrupted, actually make change, it ends up that meaning is far more important than the technology itself. Incremental changes in technology or disruptive ones without meaning lead to very little. Disruptive changes in meaning and the, meaning and the social side can lead to a lot, no matter where our technology is. So we need when we innovate to add that meaning, especially to the life side of sustainable cities. Right, that's looking at the innovation ecosystem. I would like to share with you maybe how SUTD is trying to approach this problem uh, and actually change how we, how we look at the innovation ecosystem. One stop there is uh, two, two sister cities, I mean two sister centers. The first center is led by Ambassador Chan, the Lee Kuan Yew Center for Innovative Cities. What it is engaged in is looking at thinking and research on critical problems related to urbanization and the urban setting, looking for design for demographics, for resource scarcity, for social capital, etc. Perhaps a different and new approach to that innovation ecosystem. Another center is the one that I'm privileged to run here in Singapore. It's a multi-million dollar center that's shared with MIT. 70% is here in Singapore. 30% uh, is at MIT. And it's looking at how we approach design. Design uh, in terms of grand challenges. As you may see by the graphic up here, we have sustainable built environment, which we share with our sister center as a key grand challenge. But it's not only looking at the grand challenge itself, but how do we change design? How do we build design to actually help us solve the, uh, the sustainable city problems? It's design in visualization and prototyping. It's design in uh, how do we foster creativity? How could I take this group of people in this room and perhaps create a 1,000 ideas an hour from now where one of those ideas may be the things that changes it, even though we didn't believe we could do that? How do we bring techniques and methods to bear in that realm? So these are two sister cities that we're trying to change, maybe perhaps the landscape of Singapore. We are doing this in, in a new design science, design thinking model, uh, as shown here, uh, with the grand challenges and our design, what we call design research thrust, how we're advancing design. And why it's so important to us is every project we have here at SUTD, every project has a grand challenge, something we don't know if we can solve it, something that we're scared about, something that we know we have good ideas, but who knows if they'll be fulfilled. But at the same time, every project is looking to advance design. And hopefully you can see the interplay. As we advance design, we'll advance the technology. We have the possibilities of solving the grand challenge. As we advance the grand challenge, we inform design on how we need to improve it. That's our model. Now let me end with hopefully some provocative thoughts. So I'm going to share some project snapshots with you. These are from our very talented faculty, students, and partners here and from around the world. And these snapshots maybe give us a glimpse that we have hope uh, and that these are things that are being done currently right now. Let me start with technology. All right, at the technology level, what you see here, this is a uh, this is a technology, you see a cube, it's a sensor cube. Could you imagine having a sensor cube in your pocket? I'm a nerd, all right, so bear with me. A sensor cube in your pocket, it might have four of a suite of 30 sensors you could have. You could take out that sensor at any moment and maybe measure an energy level. Maybe measure what the haze level is in Singapore or someplace else. Maybe measure any value you want to maybe get an insight into your problem. Think about how it might change the way we think, at least from this nerdy engineer's viewpoint. All right, another project in technology. Can you imagine uh, having the problem of uh, infection rates that are out of control in a number of the health clinics that are in countries very much surrounding Singapore? What if we added a very simple autoclaving technology built on a pressure cooker, adding some really neat twists to it? You can ask me what those twists are later, such that we're looking to reduce infection rates by 
for example, with our partner country, India, in the process. A technology that might be more about sustainability. Another technology. Imagine a project in which uh, we don't have, or imagine a city where you don't have the smooth roadways, the sidewalks, and the conveniences like you have in Singapore or in, maybe in many of the Netherlands cities, but where you need a new technology, and maybe it's a simple levering technology that allows you to get around anywhere you want with what we call a leverage freedom chair. This is a technology that's currently in production in India, a project out of the International Design Center. Imagine another technology here. Imagine if you could put some very simple but innovative technology in every vehicle in Singapore, in any vehicle in any city around the world, put it in the trains, put it in cabs, put it in buses, so that in, in a moment's notice you know what the landscape of traffic is, you know what the patterns are, you know uh, people, individuals can make decisions on whether they're going to walk, what they're going to take, how they're going to get there in a very efficient way. Maybe it'll change the way we perceive all of this, where right now we have very little control over it. That's our CloudThink project out of SUTD. Well, those are some technologies. Now let me go to, uh, well, I'm sorry, one more, and I have it in my hand here. Imagine you know, Singapore's goal in 10 to 20 years to be water independent. How are we going to get there? Uh, the way we use water, the way we uh, store water, uh, maybe under the ground in Singapore will be very key parts, but it will also be technology. I hold a kind of uh, not very visually appealing little rectangle in my hand. What's in this rectangle is new nanotechnology, which will allow us to take seawater and in the most efficient process that we know about in the world today, be able to process seawater here to get fresh water. It's called a five to one ratio. For every five liters of salt water you put through it, you only need one water of fresh water to actually clean the filter post-processing. Post Maybe those technologies will get us a step closer to that independence of water that Singapore desires and many cities around the world desire. Well, that's technology. So let's, look, again, look more at the city level. And at the city level, uh, here's a project. Uh, Thomas Schroffer is here, uh, as well as his partner, uh, Professor Giacomo. This is bringing a systems faculty member that has expertise in optimization with an architectural designer who's, do, who's doing fabulous work, looking at a church installation where they'll, and the pattern you see here is being able to bring passive lighting into whatever building, get the lighting that you want passively, no activation, and then being able to add other sustainable features like green roof to that structure, modeling it up front so that we can get insights between engineering and architecture that we might not have had before. What a fabulous project for the city of Singapore as, as a starting point. Another project for the city of Singapore. All right, this is maybe a simple one. You might have driven around Singapore and seen all the bus stops. All right? In these bus stops, uh, they're, they're wonderful structures of Singapore. Singapore is very good at taking care of its habits. So they're, they're kind of flat, give you a little bit of shade, give you a little bit of rain protection. But can you imagine just adding a slight feature to it? It's called an airfoil, a ripple to it, to where if you sit under these bus stops, especially in the Singapore heat, you might feel an effective decrease of two degrees Celsius. All right? a, a, a project for Singapore. Well, they tell me I'm out of time. I'm going to give you some images as we go through a dragon wall. Give you another image for the city here. How about a city form lab that's looking at data at a new level for cities as we look for sustainability? How about a, a creative city where we look at, forgive me as it's bouncing here, a creative city where we look at uh, with our elderly partners understanding how they've added creativity to their own city. Something we call the, op the uh, Opportunity Lab, where we're in Philippines, we're in five to six countries around the world taking a new model of how we design and participatory design with, the, with people. These are a snapshot of projects, and I'll leave you with a couple quotes about our problem. These are quotes by Mark Twain. There's a great deal of human nature in people. I think sustainable cities is not less about the technology, less about the concrete, it's much more about the people. And the last one says, you can't depend on your eyes when your imagination is out of focus. We need to not only focus on people, but we need to bring design to everybody, especially our elderly, especially all generations. Thank you very much for letting me share this with you.